Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. Today I'm actually gonna be working on the exhaust on Salty. I already started to mock it up and here is what we got. Yes, yes, we have big old bullhorns on this thing. So pretty simple exhaust so far. A little 45, a straight, and then the bullhorn. So I'm actually going to cut this back a little bit, put a V-band right here. So I ordered those up. So then if I want to, I can modify the exhaust. If you didn't know bullhorns actually serve a purpose, the exhaust flow coming out of it creates a little bit of a downforce on the front of the car, so then it helps you from doing wheelies. But there are classes that say you can't have bullhorns or classes that say the exhaust can only stick out a few inches past the bumper, which we have a class like that in Colorado. So just in case we wanna go run that, we're gonna have that right there. So all I gotta do is build from the V-band out if I ever wanna change up the exhaust. But I think that is where we're headed. I actually cut up the old exhaust on the Salty. If you guys remember, the old exhaust came up and went through the fender and actually came out this hole right here. So I went ahead and cut that up. I had to smash it to clear the tire and all that. So all that stuff's not usable, but out here was usable, out there was usable. I still got a pretty good, uh, looks like a part of a 90 right there, or maybe a 45. And then I ordered another I'm using the Vibrant Stainless, that's what this is as well, as you guys can see. Had a heat on it, so it started to turn a little gold. This one has not, but hopefully will soon enough. So today, that's what we're gonna work on. I'm also going to work on building the wastegate pipes. I'm thinking that it's gonna come out, come across, and dump back into the exhaust right here, put the O2 right here, but that's all stuff I gotta kinda work on. I would like for that little piece of pipe to be removable, so I also ordered some little slip connectors, so these are kinda cool. They, uh, they allow you to have your pipe slip in and out. So we're gonna, first time using these, wasn't exactly sure how they worked, but I kind of figured it out. And we're gonna get those put in the car and see if we can make those work for Salty. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by tacking this together, maybe shortening this up and getting my V-band in there and just trying to building out one piece at a time. I am trying to shoot for being just inside the fender lip, so if I wanna cut it and keep it, so I have a little bit of a connector here. I wanted to originally notch the whole bumper, so then I could just slide the front end off if needed, but with the V-band in there, I guess take the front end off, you just have to pop two V-bands, and then it would be able to come off, so not terrible, but, uh, I also don't want the big old floppy bumper that's sitting up there falling off while we're, uh, we're flopping around while I'm driving around. One of the first issues I'm running into is this little bracket right here, which I think used to just go down and hold the fog lights or something like that. So I need to double check and make sure that that is not gonna get in the way because that's about where actually I want my V-band to be. So I might end up hanging the front bumper on here because that can adjust this by a little bit too, just so then we know where we're going. It's actually for the inner fender that used to be in here. Gonna go ahead and cut this off, get that out of the way. Don't need that where we're going. Well, that's kind of the first look with the front fenders, tires, and uh, bumper with the engine sitting in it and everything. I mean, we kind of looked at it a little bit, but not much. Kind of gives you an idea. So this is right here where I'm trying to come out with the exhaust. So we'll figure that out here in just a second. But I figured, take a second, take a look at it. I think that's looking pretty sick. And yeah, so now I can check out, go through the fender figure out where the hole's gonna be, and then we'll end up working on that side once this side's all done. It's always a nervous thing when you go to cutting a bumper, but this bumper's pretty rough. It's pretty beat up from previous, from before I even got the car and stuff like that. So I think I'm actually, you can get one of these for like a hundred some bucks, they're, they're pretty cheap, and uh, get a new front bumper at some point soon and repaint it. But uh, you can also see now the fresh air inlet coming into the turbo. It's pretty sweet how it all lined up. I don't know if I've showed you guys this with the front end on it yet or not with the turbo stuff, but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna, I think it's turned out pretty freaking sweet. So what I'm gonna do is tack the V-band onto this piece of pipe so then I can put it in the car without trying to hold two different pieces and see this will add the length. I'm just gonna take the length off this. It's got this big old weld crap on here from before anyway, so I wanna try to cut that off. So we'll just see if I can get that removed within the process. So we got our piece tacked on. If I bring and set this in here, it just 
barely, barely, barely clears the fender. So I pretty much know that this would almost match this if literally if I just pushed in just a boop, that's where it'd be able to connect. That is way outside the car. If I cut my hole, and however far I want this to slide in and be tucked up against the body is how much I need to cut off of that. So I'll probably take a few inches, two, three inches off, suck the bullhorn into the car. So I'll just take it off of this end here, which is about what I had there. So I think it's gonna work out kinda how I was thinking. What I kinda did is I actually flipped the V-band around and projected the tube out to the fender. If I get that out of the way, you guys can see, I was able to mark out pretty much where the hole needs to be for it to come through. So here's the dilemma. I have a four inch cutoff saw, and that's a four inch pipe, so it'd be super tight, but I think I'm still gonna cut this, and then just use a little Dremel since it's plastic fiberglass. Uh, it's a plastic fender, so it should be able to Dremel out real easy to open up to fit the tube without going too big and then having this big old gap that always looks terrible. So start tight and then we'll just work it out to fit the tube oh yeah and while you're working on your drag radial car you watch drag radial racing so hopefully one of the days we can go to one of these big events and go have some fun this would be more like the all still all glass but this thing is super probably still heavy for those classes but hey we might still go have some fun at some point just like that pull back apart so there's my hole that's all marked out i think i'm actually going to drill it through this side i might put a couple pieces of tape on the back side but anytime i drill Seems like if you drill with the hole saws from the painted side, you get a little more wobble so you can get scratches around the hole. So it's gonna actually come through the back side and we should be pretty good. Like I said, not super worried about this bumper though because I probably will be putting another one on, but at least we've used this one as the template for the next one once we do get it. I got my little center hole marked out. Give it a rip, see what happens. Slow down so it doesn't get too hot. edge a little bit, no big deal, just a little bit of paint. It's actually cutting through the back side. I think it was definitely the right move. Now we just gotta get hung back on the car and figure out how far off I was. Pretty good. It is tight, so you have to kinda it kinda moves the bumper, but that's easy enough. I'll clearance that. Kind of looking at it, I think that's about how far out I want to be off the car so then I'm not getting a bunch of the residue from the exhaust on the fender or the wheel. Because then you end up with a black wheel all the time. So I want to be out past it a little bit. I might even tuck it in just a hair more. So measuring that, which I can't show you guys, but just, just trust me, that that is about seven inches from here to here. So that more or less means I can take my other piece if that's where I want it. Maybe I'll go six and a half, suck it in just a little bit more. But I can take this piece, measure from the outside lip in, and then also it does sit inside the lip. So you have a little bit of adjustment there just to kind of you know fit it because this this tube actually fits all the way inside the v-band so i think i'm going to cut that down get it tacked onto there get it all put in the car and we'll see how it looks there's the old piece and here it is shortened up so i ended up going right at seven inches then with it sliding inside of the uh v-band and stuff that'll help tuck it up into the car a little bit better i also use blue tape somebody in the last video mentioned that there's different tape that doesn't leave residue and then i get it hot and then it leaves residue it does suck but it helps you keep a straight line if you're using like a cutoff wheel to cut them i do i would like to get like a big bandsaw and run them through there but you know it works for this busting out the solar flux again this is stuff i use to coat the inside of the pipe since i don't back purge it just haven't ever set myself up with the little deal or the little you know plug or whatever and then the hose that comes off of it so this is a really easy way to do it without having to go through setting all that up and it, it does really well i mean we have multiple cars that have used this over the last few years and never had a crack or an issue with any of the welds or anything so put a little bit of this in the container you max mix a little bit of alcohol in there with it now i got my little paste on there just come around brush to the inside of each joint now we got coating there there down there it's really pretty good and there we go all tacked up all the way from the back of the exhaust out to the fender with the v-band for that expanded flexibility so there's kind of what it looks like right there i think that looks pretty good 
I like how it's uh, out past the wheel, but not way, way out. I mean, it's pretty far out, but uh, we can always turn it and tilt it and angle it depending on what we kind of, what we want out of this thing. So I'm going to go full, full nose. It is still pretty tight on the bumper. So I'm definitely still going to have to clearance that some, but at least it's nice and tight right now. It's time to look at this whole wastegate into exhaust deal here. A lot of people will just take turn and dump them, but if I take and turn and dump it, I'm kind of like right here, which is in line with the back tire. If you ever push a head gasket, water comes out the exhaust. I really am trying to do everything I can to not put fluid on the track or exhaust under the car to where it gets everything all dirty and nasty. So I'm actually just gonna try to take it, come out, turn over and come back into the exhaust, pretty much like right here as far out as I can so then I have as much room as I need to for the O2 sensor. But otherwise that's kind of my plan and then I'll do the same over there. I think it'll be super clean, super simple, like everything else on the build to just bring it over and tie it in. I mean, it would be easier just to like 180 it, go down and push it out the bottom. Initially I thought about doing that. This side wouldn't have worked. This side, I could have pretty much turned that thing straight down and shot just a wastegate pipe down kind of at the ground down there. But um, I think I'm gonna tie it back in and then I'm curious to see what it kind of sounds like or what it acts like when the exhaust is back into the tube and then also on the two-step and stuff like that. Just add exhaust coming out the four inch pipe, but I just want to make sure it's past the O2 sensor so it doesn't interfere with any of the readings. I took this 45 that has a little bit longer leg right here and still not quite at the right angle because it's starting to shoot up and away. I need to shoot over here to the wastegate. So I just need to keep bringing it down a little bit more. So I need to keep cutting off of the bottom here and then eventually hopefully I can get to lay somewhat close to about like that and then I can start shooting it towards the wastegate right there so starting with this little piece this is definitely the weird piece for what we'll need to go onto it I'll pull everything out cut this hole out I'm getting ready to attach the slip joint to that little piece and I thought I'd show you guys before I you know install it and stuff kind of what it looks like so it actually is three pieces once you put these two pieces together, it has a little bit of a gap in there for this one to slide in. This one's already notched up, so it sits in between. So this one gets sandwiched between this one and this one. So this goes towards the engine side, and then this will go out. So then the gas can flow past it on its way out of the vehicle, and it won't hit like a hard edge. So nice smooth transition. But then also, once this is welded to this, you'll be able to grab these and slip it out like that and separate. For the piece that's going to come out of the wastegate, I'm just going to take a stab at it and go right about here. Hopefully that's a little extra and then I always have, I can always bring it back like down to this line where I think it's actually going to hit or I always got another piece if I need. Not a bad guess. It helps being able to rotate this to hit the angle but everything's really close. I still got to grind some more on the front piece to get it to line up the way I want but uh, I'm in the ballpark at least and that's kind of what it's going to look. I think that is super sick. So. Um, I need about 17 more hands to do this, but I'm going to keep working on this, try to get it tacked together. After a whole bunch of grinding, we got that pretty gosh dang close to fitting. Here you guys can kind of see what the finished product should look like. I'm going to pull it out, tack it all together on this piece here, and then uh, once I know it's sitting the way I want, then I'll mark out in here, cut the hole into the pipe, and then weld this on last. Kind of shows you guys what that ended up looking like. All I did was cut a big old chunk out of it to begin with and this sat there with my flash disc on my grinder and just kept going after it until it sat nice and flush. Finally, I don't have to hold anything. So it's sitting there. Everything is completely tacked on this side other than obviously where I got to cut through. But I think I'm going to start working on this side. I actually already grabbed a piece to uh, kind of get a visual to make sure it's not going to be too far different from that side. And it's just going to have a little bit more up and over because of this turbo compared to this one. That one's a little bit flatter. And uh, the wastegates aren't perfectly in the same position, but they're close. So we're gonna start probably putting the big exhaust together on this side, then that, and then I will kind of have everything tacked and then finish it all up together. So I'm gonna get to work on this side. Real nice about this side is I was able to do it all in one piece with the 45 and the long. And now we got it kind of marked out where it's gonna go through. I just kind of measured down from the top. Everything's going to line up fairly symmetrical. I do think this turbo might be in a hair more because this is going to end up a hair longer. And then uh, obviously that's going to be a little different, but otherwise I think we're super close. Got everything marked up on the car. And now all I'm going to try to do is figure out the bullhorn. I'm going to try to cut more or less the same piece out of this bin. 
as what matches that one, so then they're symmetrical and pretty even. That side's been done. Now, this side is almost there. Just gotta build out our little wastegate dump. Came out pretty good. I ended up having the, the tube, that tube actually almost sat inside of the uh, V-Van. This one is a little bit bigger. I don't know if just, I mean, older, been heated a bunch, not sure. Maybe it shrunk a little bit, but this side, I had to end up cutting about an inch and a half off to get it the same distance here to here, which I started long anyway. So it's always easier to remove than to add. So now we got pretty symmetrical bull horns for what it is. I mean, nothing can be exact, but it, it is it is dang, dang close. So again, went ahead and cut that. Went ahead and sanded around the bumper. Still need to sand a little more. But this side's actually not all that tight. Well, after lots of cut, fit, grind, cut, fit, grind, we got this side done too. So I think it looks pretty awesome. And I mean, pretty freaking symmetrical for what it is with not having symmetrical turbo. So, I mean, yeah, that one goes up a little bit higher, but I mean, visually walking up to it, it they look very, very similar. That one obviously kicks up a little higher. This one's a little lower. But then you also have other things in the car that aren't symmetrical, like the intake tube. You'll have an alternator there, all sorts of different things. So I think that's where I'm gonna call it. Pretty much finished up fabbing all the turbo kit. I just gotta do a whole bunch of welding on this thing and uh pot and pop the holes once that is ready to go but i want to get everything pretty much locked down first and then we'll do that last so if you guys want to see more i think we're getting ready to plumb and wire this thing so make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video